these United fans have acquired for themselves a very bad reputation and people are very fearful as to what is going to happen in the next season unless something very serious is done. When they all get together, the brain goes out of the window. And I think that's when it happens, when the atmosphere becomes so electric that then the people with less self-control lose and become yachts. The Home Secretary, David Warrington, and a senior police officer speaking this week after the violence which marred Leeds United's return to the First Division. Saturday should have been a day of celebration, United beating Bournemouth to win this Second Division Championship trophy. Instead, it would be remembered for all the wrong reasons. 120 arrests, 20 people injured, and a damage bill yet to be fully assessed. What happened last weekend has been seen throughout the world. The Bournemouth police say there was a level of violence never witnessed before. So why is it that, once again, the worst forms of football hooliganism are connected with the club? Can anything more be done to stop it happening in the future? Later in the programme, the policeman in overall charge of crowd control in West Yorkshire, a former Home Secretary and local MP, and the club's chairman will be giving their views. But first, we've gained special access this week to the police intelligence units at both Bournemouth and West Yorkshire. The first of our two reports comes from Grant Mansfield in Bournemouth. The marauding mob called it the invasion of Bournemouth, not a pitch invasion, but an assault on the whole town. Today's traditional seaside scenes form a stark contrast. Bournemouth has repelled the invaders, cleaned up the mess, and is even prepared to entertain another game of football. But despite a concerted effort to return to normality, there are still reminders of the weekend Leeds United came to town. A burned out motorbike, a newspaper billboard. And at the pub where the rioting began last Friday evening, no one is forgetting. It was at the holiday revival that Leeds supporters revived a favorite tradition, soccer hooliganism. The screwdriver was hurled at staff. Today, the bar is quiet and empty. But this time last week, 800 people were packed in here. Drunk and dangerous, this was the chosen venue to kick off a weekend of violence. It got to the point where it's just so frightening, you know, that we actually, the female personnel actually went into the office, actually locked ourselves in, you know, and that was it. We just stayed there, basically. I mean, we just, we were in here, you know, behind the door, the door was locked and things were coming over. I mean, there was like, these sort of things that they were throwing at us. This just narrowly missed me by a few inches. It was just, it was petrifying. Ironically, Shirelle was born and bred in Leeds, and so was her boss. I've always, uh, I've always sort of kept in touch with Leeds, my Leeds, my Leeds relations, but I find it very difficult to be able to, to speak to anybody with a Yorkshire accent anymore. It got so scary, I just ran. They started coming, they were banging on this ledge up here. There's glasses up there. They were all coming forward and they were hurling abuse. So I just ran. I grabbed my bag and ran. It was too scary to stay here. The police say it's time now for the thugs to be scared. A special incident room has been set up and a clear message is emerging. Those people who came here, the hardcore, if they think they've got away with it, they're much mistaken. Because it won't be many weeks and months when I shall ensure that it's a large police operation knocking on their door, door early in the morning in order to arrest them for serious public order and other criminal offences. They've got my assurance of that. Thank you. Read all about it. Thank you. It's confidence boosted by knowledge that Bournemouth is one of the most security conscious towns in Britain. There are dozens of closed circuit cameras on the seafront. In addition, the police were operating another nine in and around the ground. They've collected 50 hours of video pictures, together with thousands of still photographs. The Sunday Express has shown a good picture of a St John's ambulance man. He's initially trying to restore order, but between that first picture 
and the second one, he's been laid out. Yeah. Now, do you reckon you caught that on your video? Yeah, I think there's a strong likelihood of that. While the police try to establish what happened, the local newspaper is trying to establish why it happened. The paper collected hundreds of violent snapshots, but the picture desk has voted this the most shocking image. It isn't a moment of violence, but it is proof that the rioting was planned and orchestrated. And what of the people responsible? Criminals, morons, I mean, hooligans. What word can one use? What would I like to say to them? Well, on this program, <laughs> stay away from Bruno. We don't really want you down here, do What do you feel about the prospect of Leeds coming back to Bournemouth for another game at some point in the future? I think I might emigrate. <laughs> Well, if the hooligans are planning violence at a sophisticated level, then the West Yorkshire police have been meticulously organising countermeasures. This week, we've been behind the scenes with their football intelligence teams who have some disturbing insights into the implications of the weekend events. Peter Pitt reports. Nightmare returns. What does that actually mean? Pardon? What does the nightmare return mean? Well, I would imagine it's what's been happened over the last weekend. They're just publicising it over what's happened last weekend. It's going to all start over again with other teams. Like, at first of all, we haven't played for eight, nine years. Like, Tottenham that I've got, that I've known to have hooligans and stuff like that, it's going to all start again. The same people are going out in Bournemouth that are looking for a fight are going to go to the places where there are people down there are going to give them a fight. Bred out of past troubles, there's now at Elland Road, with the full cooperation of the club, a police surveillance operation so sophisticated it's banished forever total anonymity for troublemakers in the crowd. Yeah, 1314, can you give us a description what this lad's wearing and his location in the West Stand? He's a uh, youth with a sweatshirt with two flags on the front. He's sat next to a guy with a yellow baseball cap. Can't pick him up, Tony. Yeah, we can't pick him up in here off of our camera because we're losing light. Stills uh, photography, can you pick that description up? We're looking for him at the moment. He's next to a yellow baseball cap. Yeah, he's next to him. He's got a white t-shirt on with two flags on it. Yeah, if you go into place to him, he is resurging 2248. If it is the youth we're after, he wants locking up for DC Armstrong. And the Yorkshire spirit really coming to the ball. The trouble which led to all this sophistication began 20 years ago. It appeared again in the European Cup. And there's some trouble behind the goal now, as you can see. There was this pitched battle in Birmingham. A fan died when a wall collapsed. But it was this incident at Odsall arousing fears of another Bradford fire that provoked the greatest police effort to end what they feared was a conspiracy of violence. There'd been arrests after one police operation. But it was officers going undercover for six months in Operation Wild Boar who were able to pinpoint some serious offenders. After a series of raids, this was the Hall of Weapons. The police felt they'd gone a good way towards banishing the violence associated with Leeds United. But unknown to outsiders, the trend towards undercover work has quietly continued from Bradford to Bournemouth. We've been inside the intelligence unit of West Yorkshire Police. We can't show you the faces of some of the people here. It would endanger their undercover work. Officers travel to Leeds matches, mingling with the crowd and accumulating a mass of information. Others take video pictures and stills photographs. This unit anticipated the Bournemouth trouble and a full team of spotters, undercover men and photographers led by this detective were at Bournemouth last weekend. The unit have some very worrying observations of the significance of events there. We saw the, um, the crowd throwing at the police, assaulting the police and, and constantly um, trying to, to force entry into the ground. The hooligan element who have been controlled all season by the police, both home and away, and the restrictions put on them by the club themselves and the work that the club has done to try and prevent hooliganism 
um, they have decided to show themselves in order that next season, when they come against the old rivals, they, they have established themselves as a force to be reckoned with. You saw people who you had seen before involved in trouble? Yes, definitely. definitely. We're talking about a yob culture. Uh, now, this is a group that's not easily identified. Uh, the police are positive in their ways of trying to identify them. We will continue with that. Are there people at the heart of this that you fear will be there to cause trouble next season? Well, yes, and you've got to look at the, the culture itself that's distinctly broken into three groups, a very young group, a middle-aged, uh, a middle-young group, age group, and then an older group. So we're talking about a development here that youngsters are seeing as being attractive. Now we've got to stamp that out, we've got to stop that. And the other way of doing that is by deterrent and gathering intelligence and identifying these people. My personal feelings are, having been down to Leeds for 25 years, that yet again we're going to get the old, old wars starting again. Liverpool and Leeds were always enemies, on the field and off the field. Manchester United on the field, off the field. More importantly, Chelsea were always a confrontation on the field and off the field. And I think that's the areas where we're going to get uh, the problems next year. The club too are looking ahead to next year. They say, and the police agree, that they've done everything in their power to prevent hooliganism. Alongside West Yorkshire police, they've hired their own security teams who mingle with the crowds. This week, the supporters' club banned provocative T-shirts. They have their own identity card scheme. They implored fans not to travel to Bournemouth without tickets. Well, really, they should stay at home. And, um, you know, there's cinemas that are going to have it on and the telly's going to have it on. Um, if they do go down there, which a lot, a lot probably will anyway, there's not going to be no stopping that. But, you know, um, enjoy it down there, you know. Look at that. But some, I nursing what they said were bruises children. from police batons, admitted there'd been many without tickets. They give us 2,000 tickets, right? There's going to be 8,000 people without tickets. So what are you going to do? What are they going to do? They're going to get angry. Most Did you all could. have tickets who yeah, went yeah, to Bournemouth? I, I, I didn't, didn't have, have one, but well, I, I mean, was the, 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 club and, the club and everybody were pleading with people yeah, I know, like you but not I would to go That's why they went, went because if you say there. don't go, they do. And it wasn't just Leeds, they were from no, everywhere. I'll put it to you, I mean, the club said yeah, people like you don't go, but, so but why I, are you letting your club down by going? No, not really. No, because I was meant to have a ticket when I got down there. Somebody meant to have a ticket waiting for me when I got down there, and the lad never turned out with a ticket. If the problems become one of what to do with people who turn up without tickets, the intelligence units say that some police forces themselves must take a share of the responsibility. The police are to blame in certain areas of the country in as much as when there have been a lot of fans go without tickets to get rid of the problem on the streets, the public disorder problem, they've allowed them to go into the ground, sometimes without tickets, to get the problem off the streets. So if the idiots know that they can get into the ground by either purchasing a ticket at inflationary prices or by the police allowing them into the ground, they will continue to go. And we've got to bring our act together to stop the police allowing them in at any price without a ticket. What I want you to do, therefore, is to work as a team with a view to establishing the identities of the people who have caused all the mayhem down in Bournemouth. And that's really this group of Leeds our, detectives uh, are meeting for the first time this week to look at their intelligence unit's videos. At the end of the briefing, we're going to go through the film again to try and identify any of the Leeds hooligans who we know were down there. As you know, uh, we have quite a number uh, in this division who are frequent attenders on the away matches. There's also the chance to assess how the fans at Bournemouth became involved in all the trouble. Particularly interested is the commander at the Leeds ground, Chief Superintendent David Clarkson, a veteran of public disorder from the Battle of Orgreave to the Toxteth and Chapeltown riots. I think that people set out with, to meet their friends, their colleagues, their, their fellow supporters at the football game, in the cop, in the East Stand, in the South Stand, it matters not where. And I think when they all get together, the brain goes out of the window. And I think that's when it happens, when the atmosphere becomes so electric that then the people with less self-control lose and become yobs. 
Among those arrested at Bournemouth was Adrian Wraith, a Dewsbury shop fitter. He admitted conduct likely to cause a breach of the peace and was bound over in the sum of £500 for two years. He'd travelled to Bournemouth without a ticket to join the celebrations. It may be the last time he joins his team. Well, when it wakened, it started out just as a wakened out, like a wakened break, and ended up now I'm going to be, end up being banned from Ellen Road for life and probably from watching another football team. I really didn't do anything wrong. What do you think about Leeds and the reputation of both the club and the fans now following the weekend? Well, it's ended up because they've been pretty steady for the last couple of years. They've got back and there has not been much trouble anywhere. Now they've just got back to square one and we're fans in English football again. Hi, gentlemen, we have the board meeting to discuss the affairs of this weekend following the promotion of the club. We have the civic reception on Sunday morning. We have the dinner on Sunday night. Also, we have to discuss new prices and also the consequences of Bournemouth. Today, the board of Leeds United met to consider the future, the joys of promotion, the problems of a newfound notoriety. But whatever they were discussing, they were aware that many other factors with a bearing on their future are beyond their control, in the hands of the government, the football authorities and the police. Next season, West Yorkshire are preparing to deploy up to 500 officers at Elland Road, Meanwhile, the intelligence unit have compiled a brand new report on a growing threat from a hooligan group elsewhere in West Yorkshire. So if we look at uh, a successful police operation in 1987 called Operation Wild Boar, which led to the arrest of many Leeds football hooligans, to a current problem where we're looking at a particular group in West Yorkshire that are traveling uh, throughout the country, creating problems where they're ambushing visiting fans leaving the football ground. They don't actually go to the football ground to watch football. It is a problem, it's not going to go away, and we've got to face it. The world's press were at Elland Road this week to observe Leeds United. Unfortunately for the club, some were there for what they would regard as the wrong reasons. But like it or not, they'll be watching closely next season for the famous and the infamous face of Leeds United.